Alright, thanks for watching, and today I would like to derive the equations for spherical coordinates, which in my opinion are very, very important. So, what is the setup? Suppose you have a point x, y, z. Then, what you want to do, you want to write this in terms of a rho, theta, and phi. Where rho, it's the distance between x, y, z and the origin. So, like rho, like rho -dius. And then, uh, theta, what it is, it's basically, um, if you have the point x, y here, it's the angle between the x-axis and the point x, y. So this is theta. And I like to think of it as in terms of horizontal, because it goes this way. And lastly, phi, I like to call it vertical, because it's the angle between the z-axis and your point here. So we have rhodius, uh, horizontal, and vertical. So that is free. And today's goal is simply to write x, y, and z in terms of uh, rho, theta, and phi. So, and how do we do this? Well, let's do it step by step. So first of all, look at this triangle here. We have this right triangle with the following sides. We have rho, we have z, and we have phi. That's great, we have this right triangle, we know sort of uh, two sides and the angle, so abracadabra, so katoa, and we get cosine of phi equals to z over rho, and remember what we want to find, we want to find z, so z is rho cosine of phi. That's the first thing, so very good. And also, while we're at it, let's try to find this dotted thing because it will be super useful in a second. So what we get is sine of phi equals to question mark over rho. So question mark is rho sine of phi. Okay, so we found that this dotted line is question mark. And now what is... the the question mark, well question mark is really the same as the distance between x, y, z and this point, if you like to think about it, it's 0, 0, z. And that is square root of x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared plus z minus z squared. And that square, that square root of x squared plus y squared, which is exactly the same thing here. In other words, this length here is question mark. And if you like to think about this, it's just the radius of the circle between 0 and x comma y. So what do we have? We have 0, 0 we have x comma y, and the radius question mark, and moreover, we have the angle theta. And so, that should remind you a lot about polar coordinates. So, given a radius question mark and an angle theta, what are x and y? Well, x is just question mark cosine of theta, which becomes rho sine phi cosine of theta. And what is y? y is question mark, so, um, 
sine of theta, which is rho sine phi sine of theta. And lastly, you have our equations x, y, and z. x is rho sine phi cosine of theta, which again, you should just think of a question mark cosine of theta. Rho sine phi sine of theta, that's question mark sine of theta. And lastly, rho cosine of phi. Ta-da! So I know it's a thing I was always scared of when I took multivariable, but it's just based on this triangle thing and just remarking that this distance is the same as this distance. And then in the xy plane, we just have a, um, polar coordinates. So that's what helps us. Okay, that's the first thing I wanted to do. And um, yeah, that's the first thing I wanted to do. The next the order of business, I want to derive the Jacobian rho squared sine phi. So intuitively, why do we get a rho squared sine phi in the Jacobian? And I'm not going to do it rigorously with the definition of the Jacobian. I just want to tell you intuitively how you get it. And for this, you have to know the following thing. So fa. I don't know if you know this or not. Suppose you have a wedge of length L and angle alpha. The question is, what is the length here? What is the length of this wedge? Well, notice if we had the whole circle, so an angle of 2 pi, then the length would be 2 pi L. And therefore, if we have an angle alpha, the length is what? Well, just cross multiply alpha 2 pi L over 2 pi, and that's alpha L. It's important to understand that. If you have a wedge of length L and angle alpha, the length is just alpha L. And now let me explain how to get uh, the rho squared sine phi of that uh, uh, when you change variables. So suppose you start at the point x, y, and z, and you move rho, theta, and phi just a little bit. If you remove rho, you get a little opening of length d rho. If um, you move phi a little bit, then, or sorry, if you move theta a little bit, you get a certain opening, and we'll figure out what that is. So this is d theta. And lastly, and again, this is horizontal, like horizontal. And lastly, you want to move it vertically. So suppose you move phi a little bit, and it's a bit hard to visualize, but if you move phi a little bit, then you get this little wedge here, and with length question mark, question mark. Then the idea is, assuming it's a rectangle, which it isn't quite really, but assuming this is a rectangle, then the volume of this thing, so if you want dx, dy, dz, equals to, well, um, first of all, this length d rho times question mark times question mark question mark. Okay. And the idea is simply uh, how do we find this length? How do we find this length? And how do we find the other length here? Okay, and for this, we need this little thing. So again, suppose we're on our sphere, and we start here at x, y, z, and we move, move phi a little bit. Then, d 
the angle is d phi, but the length, if you want, is rho, because rho is the distance between zero and that point. And therefore, this opening here, the vertical opening, is simply rho d phi. Because again, you have a length of rho and an opening of d phi. That's why it's rho d phi. And the question is now, suppose we had the point here, and we move theta a little bit, then here's what we get. Well, the opening is d theta, so the angle is d theta. But the question is, what is this length here? Well, remember from before, we had this length question mark, and we saw that the length between the point x, y, and 0, 0, was precisely rho sine of phi. And that's why here the length is rho sine of phi and d phi. And lastly, you just have to multiply both of them together. So we get d rho, uh, rho sine of phi, d theta, sorry. And lastly, rho d phi. And if you multiply all those together, we indeed get rho squared sine of phi, d rho, d theta, d phi. So again, just to reiterate, how do we get the volume of this wedge? Assume that it's basically a box, so by approximation, you get that the length, the volume of this box is First of all, this length, which is d rho, is just a little change in rho, times this length, which is the angle is d phi, but the length here is rho, so rho d phi. Lastly, for the, um, sorry, that was for double question mark, and for this, the angle is d theta, and the length, turns out to be rho sine phi, so we get rho sine phi d theta times rho d phi times d rho, and if you put those together, you indeed get rho squared sine phi, and you could try doing it with Jacobians, it's a bit messy, but I like that, it's slightly more intuitive. All right, so if you like that and you want to see more multivariable fun and more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.